Okay, so welcome back. We're going to now do a simulation of the motion of an object that is subject to restoring forces that obey Hooke's law. And remember what that means is that there's a force that is downward if we displace our object upwards from the equilibrium position. There's a force that's upward if we displace it downward. And the strength of that force is proportional to the amount that we displace it. And so what we're going to do is basically just use these rules of physics that we've understood in the previous lectures, and these will tell us how the position and velocity change with time, and we're just going to use the simulation like before to plot that. So let's have a look at what this gives us. Okay, here we go. So in this simulation, we are going to simulate the motion of an object that obeys Hooke's law. And that means that it is subject to restoring forces. And these restoring forces are proportional to the displacement. So if I displace this object upward, then it's going to feel a downward force. And if I displace it upward twice as much, then it's going to feel twice as much downward force. So let's see what this motion looks like. The starting point is going to be that this object will be displaced upward from its equilibrium position. And so if we watch the object, then we see that it oscillates up and down. And it looks very much like our demo with a mass on a spring. Okay, and we're going to see that it really is a very good model of the motion of a mass on a spring. So I wanted to point out one thing that's very special about this up and down motion. So it's a periodic motion, but it's a very particular kind of periodic motion. And it turns out to be exactly the same as the up and down motion of an object on a uniformly rotating sphere or disc. And so you can see in the simulation, the pink circle on the disc is just going around and around at a uniform rate. And so that's one kind of periodic motion. And if you just focus on the vertical position of the pink circle on the disc, then you see it's exactly the same as the vertical motion of our object that's subject to these Hooke's Law type restoring forces. And now we're going to compare this with the actual motion of a mass on a spring, and we'll see that this motion with Hooke's Law is a very, very good model. Uh, it, accurately reproduces that motion of the mass on the spring. So now we see that our simulation of an object moving under the influence of a Hooke's Law restoring force actually is a very good match to the actual up and down motion of a mass attached to a spring. And so this indicates that the spring force is very well modeled by Hooke's Law. And we see that both motions, the real one and the simulated one, are matching nicely with the motion of our pink dot on the rotating circle. So in this simulation, Oops. we are going to simulate the motion right, of an let's object. Turn that one off. And we'll go back to our slides here. And so what you saw, just to summarize, was that the object moving up and down subject to Hooke's Law forces, which we in reality have in the case of a mass on a spring, or in many other situations when we have just a small amplitude displacement, sorry, a small amount of displacement, we're gonna be talking about amplitude in a minute, a small amount of displacement uh, from the equilibrium position. So that Hooke's Law motion turned out to match the vertical motion of a rotating, an object on a rotating disc. And so this is a very, very special kind of periodic motion. You might say it's the simplest kind of periodic motion that you can have, because if you remember our physics in outer space without any forces at all, already there in that simplest possible environment, you have a type of periodic motion, which is the rotation of an object. And that continues with a fixed period forever because of the angular momentum conservation. And so if you just watch uh, a point on a rotating object and you just track its motion in one direction, like the vertical direction in this case, 
then it goes up and down in exactly the same way as the object on the spring or in general the object subject to these Hooke's law restoring forces. So we have a name for that very special kind of motion which is simple harmonic motion. So what we want to do next is have a look at the actual time graph for this particular kind of periodic motion. And so now I'll just show you another simulation, kind of extend the last simulation to actually draw the time graph of the motion that we were observing. So let's have a look at that one here. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at what the time graph of simple harmonic motion looks like. The time graph of the height versus time for our object uh, moving up and down subject to these Hooke's Law restoring forces. So I'm going to turn on the grapher here and we'll just let that go. There we go. So you see that we get this nice smooth up and down curve and this kind of a time graph is what's known as a sinusoidal function. Okay, so I've reproduced that sinusoidal function here in the diagram. Uh, you might have heard about these functions probably in high school, at least uh, when you covered cosines and sine functions. That's what we're talking about here. So these, these particular kinds of functions are in general called sinusoidal functions. So, so simple harmonic motion is the type of motion that you get with Hooke's law forces and the, the displacement versus time, in this case the height of the object versus time, is what is known as a sinusoidal function. And so next what we want to do is talk about the properties of sinusoidal functions, the properties that would distinguish those, uh, but that would say distinguish one kind of simple harmonic motion from another kind of simple harmonic motion. So suppose I have like one mass on one particular spring and a different mass on a different spring and I set them both moving, what are the ways that those would be different? What ways would the two motions be different? So pause the video for a moment and maybe think about that. Or if you want to instead think about the time graph of the motion, what are the different ways, if I made time graphs of those two different motions, what would be the different ways that those time graphs could differ from one another. Okay, so I want to talk about two specific ways that these time graphs will, in general, differ. Two specific properties that characterize the simple harmonic motion. And so the first one is what we call the amplitude. It's basically how far does this object get away from its equilibrium position? So if I pull a, spring, a mass down away from the equilibrium position, then the amount that I pull it down, uh, that's going to determine the amplitude. Okay, so up and down could be different for different kinds of oscillations. And so that's one important parameter that we use to characterize different simple harmonic motion. The other thing that you might have would be the period so you might have two different uh, periods for the two different simple harmonic motions. Okay, one might be oscillating up and down uh, slower, and the other might be oscillating up and down faster. And we know from our previous lectures that that's related directly to the concept of frequency. So the inverse, one over the period is the frequency, or one over the frequency is the period. Okay, so, so either the period of, or the frequency is another important property of any particular kind of simple harmonic motion. Okay, so next what we want to understand is what determines these things and what do, so what do, what does period depend on? What does the amplitude depend on? So I'm going to leave you with a question here just to think about, and this is just something that you could try to use your intuition for. If you have two objects 
which are the same and they're subject to the same kinds of restoring forces. So in this case, two masses that are identical on two identical springs. I displace the first one a little bit more and I displace the second one a little bit less and then I let them go. So I want you to think about which one is going to have the greater period. Is it going to be the one that I displace more initially or the one that I displace less initially? Okay, so I'm going to stop this video now and then you can find out the answer in our next video.